Hey guys, I'm LB, and we are back playing The Witness. We just went back and forth on an annoying slow-moving platform, opened this gate, and now we are exploring, because we were pretty much done with that area that we were just in. We have mastered the mechanics of the dots. So let's see, if there's anything up here, then we will investigate it. Ooh, there's a little outcropping. So we can go up and down. I'm gonna head down first. Oh, actually, there's multiple paths here. I still- we still never got this area to raise. I'm not really sure what would cause that to raise. But I guess we'll find out... maybe. It would be nice to get that to raise. It's pretty cool, I like this little inlet here. What's with that cage? There's somebody... reaching that- I've never- I didn't notice that statue before, it's like a person reaching for something in the cage there. That's weird. Oh yeah, that's the tree from, uh, from earlier. We can also go up on- across it there. We haven't done that yet. Actually, we might be able to just get up to it right now. Oh yeah, we totally can. I'm looking around for little... flash drives and stuff. Yep, there's that laser. So yeah, let's- let's go across this tree and see what's up here. Might actually be able to get to the top of the mountain in this episode. Oh my gosh, there's a hand here! Oh, we're on top of a person! I've- I did not notice this before! Wow, you can see the- the steel in there. Cool. Well... <laughs> uh, that's- that's some level of detail there, popping in and out. I've got this on low graphics settings so that I can record it easily. I didn't want to have to hassle with recording it. What the... Ooh, what is this? We found like a bunker or something. Oh, is this... Oh, it's one of the invisible symmetry puzzles. Okay. Maybe? Um... Let's see, so... Diagonally... Okay, so first of all, I want to see how to get to, to this dot with the yellow. If there even is a yellow there. I think the yellow is there and it's just invisible, but I'm not sure. So... To get there... We can literally just go diagonally like that. But... what if... We go like this... Okay. Okay, I think that gets the yellow. Then... we want to use the yellow to separate... the- the- the whites and blacks. Oh, but wait... Mmm... That's not gonna work. Yes, there is a yellow. See, I'm hitting it right now. This is where the yellow is. I can't- I can't cross it. Yeah, okay, so there is yellow here. We just can't see it. Uh, it's been a while since I did one of these invisible puzzles. Uh... What's the easiest way to isolate that white? Oh wait, there's a blue up there we have to get. Gosh. Um... No, that's not going to work. How about first... We... Oh, so blue has to end up there. Oh, goodness. Hmm... 
Yeah, so th that's that's where the yellow is. Can't go there. Hmm. How are we gonna do that? Okay, I think we have to start blue on the other side if we want to accomplish anything here. No, I'll I'll do that. But then I also have to. Mmm. I it would it would help a lot if I could see the yellow line. I'm not a fan of not being able to see the line. Yeah, so lines here. Mm-hmm. How am I gonna get it to touch those dots, though? That's the question. Oh wait, is it already? I think it's touching one of them already. That did it! Okay! <laughs> wow, that took a lot of thinking, because I can't see the yellow line, but it is there. What is this? Oh, it's another safe! I bet this is another movie. Yeah, it is! Uh... I guess it doesn't really matter which side I take a picture of it from, because I can always flip it on my phone if need be. Okay, phone, let's take a picture. Okay. We'll- we'll get to that later. We'll- we'll get to that later. But this... This is the, um... This is the thing that, a couple episodes ago, we were on the boat and we drew the line from here. Of course, we can't do it right now because we're not in the right place, but... I'm wondering what the solution to this thing is, because this is definitely important. The fact that it does the special effects and stuff and you can draw a line with it when you're on the boat. I'm pretty sure that's important. Okay, so let's get out of here and let's continue climbing up the mountain. This is really cool rocks. I- I know these are something that exists in real life, but it's just cool because I've never really seen them before in person. Just seen them in games and stuff. Oh, can't walk along that. Wow, look at this! What's going on here? Oh, I'm unlocking this. Why is he smiling? What's up with this guy? This is weird. Surveyor. Hey, look at this. Up there, you go around every hour and a half, time after time after time. You wake up usually in the mornings, and just the way that the track of your orbits go, you wake up over the Mid East, over North Africa. As you eat breakfast, you look out the window as you're going past, and there's the Mediterranean area and Greece, and Rome, and North Africa, and the Sinai, the whole area. And you realize that in one glance, that what you're seeing is what was the whole history of a man for years, the cradle of civilization. And you go around down across North Africa and out over the Indian Ocean, and look up at that great subcontinent of India, 
pointed down toward you as you go past it. And Ceylon off to the side, Burma, Southeast Asia, out over the Philippines, and up across that monstrous Pacific Ocean, vast body of water. You've never realized how big that is before. And you finally come up across the coast of California and look for those friendly things. Los Angeles and Phoenix and on across El Paso. And there's Houston. There's home. And you look and sure enough, there's the Astrodome. And you identify with that, you know? It's an attachment. And down across New Orleans and then looking down to the south and there's the whole peninsula of Florida laid out and all the hundreds of hours you spent flying across that route, down in the atmosphere, all that is friendly again. And you go out across the Atlantic Ocean and back across Africa, and you do it again and again and again. And that identity, that you identify with Houston, and then you identify with Los Angeles, and Phoenix, and New Orleans, and everything, and the next thing you recognize in yourself, is you're identifying with North Africa. You look forward to that, you anticipate it, and there it is. That whole process begins to shift of what it is you identify with. When you go around it in an hour and a half, you begin to recognize that your identity is with that whole thing, and that makes a change. You look down there, and you can't imagine how many borders and boundaries you crossed again and again and again and you don't even see them. At that wake-up scene, the Mideast, you know there are hundreds of people killing each other over some imaginary line that you can't see. From where you see it, the thing is a whole, and it's so beautiful. And you wish you could take one from each side in hand and say, look at it from this perspective. Look at that. What's in blue? And so a little later on, your friend, again those same neighbors, another astronaut, the person next to you goes out to the moon. And now he looks back and sees the Earth, not as something big where he can see the beautiful details, but he sees the Earth as a small thing out there. And now that contrast between that bright blue and white Christmas tree ornament and that black sky, that infinite universe, really comes through. The size of it, the significance of it. It becomes both things. It becomes so small and so fragile and such a precious little spot in that universe that you can block it out with your thumb. And you realize that on that small spot, that little blue and white thing is everything that means anything to you. All of history and music and poetry and art and war and death and birth and love tears, joy, games, all of it is on that little spot out there that you can cover with your thumb. And you realize that that perspective, that you've changed, that there's something new there, that relationship is no longer what it was. And then you look back on the time when you were outside on that EVA and those few moments that you had the time because the camera malfunctioned, that you had the time to think about what was happening. And you recall staring out there at the spectacle that went before your eyes. Because now, you're no longer inside something with a window looking out at a picture. But now you're out there and what you've got around your head is a goldfish bowl and there are no limits here. There are no frames, there are no boundaries. You're really out there, over it, floating, going 25,000 miles per hour, ripping through space, a vacuum, and there's not a sound. There's a silence, the depth of which you've never experienced before. And that silence contrasts so markedly with the scenery and the speed with which you know you're going. That contrast, the mix of those two things, really comes through. And you think about what you're experiencing and why. Do you deserve this? This fantastic experience? Have you earned this in some way? Are you separated out to be touched by God to have some special experience here that other men cannot have? You know the answer to that is no. 
There's nothing that you've done that deserves that, that earned that. It's not a special thing for you. You know very well at that moment, and it comes through to you so powerfully that you're the sensing element for man. You look down and see the surface of that globe that you've lived on all this time, and you know all those people down there. They are like you. They are you. And somehow you represent them when you are up there. A sensing element, that point out on the end, and that's a humbling feeling. It's a feeling that says you have a responsibility. It's not for yourself. The eye that doesn't see does not do justice to the body. That's why it's there. That's why you're out there. And somehow you recognize that you're a piece of this total life. You're out on that forefront and you have to bring that back somehow. And that becomes a rather special responsibility. It tells you something about your relationship with this thing we call life. And when you come back, there's a difference in that world now. There's a difference in that relationship between you and that planet, and you and all those other forms of life on that planet, because you've had that kind of experience. It's a difference, and it's so precious. And all through this, I've used the word you, because it's not me. It's not Dave Scott. It's not Dick Gordon, Pete Conrad, John Glenn. It's you. It's us. It's we. It's life. It's had that experience. And it's not just my problem to integrate. It's not my challenge to integrate, my joy to integrate. It's yours. It's everybody's. Russell Schweikart, 1975. Man, that was long. But I think I've solved this, or figured out what I'm supposed to do, at least. Yes! Now I just need to get it back up the other side here. This is actually really cool. This is probably the coolest puzzle in the game so far. You can draw on what you see. It teaches that somewhere else, and now we're actually putting it to use. This is amazing. We're almost there. Come on! So close! Just gotta be at the right angle. Come on! It's almost lined up. Come on! We can do it! Gosh. I did something amazing, but I don't know what I did. I saw stars go over to the waterfall there. That is cool. I want to see what I activated. It looked like it went over here, right? Oh! I activated something on the monolith! I think, is that? I think that's what I activated, right? I'm going to assume that that is what I activated. But just in case, I want to go up and look at everything. 
Because this was super cool. That's probably the coolest puzzle I've ever seen in any game ever. I saw the sparks fly... ...toward there. Yeah, it's gotta be what it was. It's gotta be the monolith. That was cool. I have to admit, that was so cool. I don't know what doing this did. I- I honestly don't know. I know it matches the river down there, but I don't know what drawing the line actually did. If it did anything at all. It's probably just there to be cool. Nope, 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 nope. Oh! That also activated something in the monolith. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm figuring out these puzzles left, right, and center. <laughs> Let's go back down and then I'll end the episode. I want to look at the monolith and see what I got this time. That is cool. Using the environment for puzzles is absolutely brilliant. That's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in a game. I have to admit. And I know I'm repeating myself here, I sound like a broken record, but seriously? I've- I've never seen something so meaningful in a game before. Yeah, we got the river! Yeah! Well guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in another episode. Goodbye!